So today we're talking about five ways that I wash my hair. And as you can see, I've got a lot of it and um, it's healthy. I like taking care of it. I did not style it. I did not do anything to it today. This is just washed and it's actually still even a little tiny bit damp because I just got out of the shower about an hour ago. So, um, so yeah, we're going to talk about how I maintain this. Uh, I do a lot of styling on it. Uh, as I mentioned before, I have a pinup channel and I do a lot of pinup photography. And so I do victory rolls and suicide rolls and curling and all sorts of stuff and making sure I take care, good care of my hair is really important. Today we're starting a series of four videos dedicated to hair and this is something that just comes up a lot. People, especially when they start a low salicylate diet, they really hope that their food is the only thing affecting them. Again, you can eat it you can absorb it or you can inhale it. And so this is kind of more of the absorption aspect. So I know a lot of people really hope that they're only affected by food, but sometimes that's not the case. Our skin is a very large organ and salicylates can be uh, absorbed through the skin and it can have um, poor effects, unfortunately, for people that are really sensitive. I do want to talk about, before we get started, that there is a guide online and it's called uh, Fibro Free and it has a salicylate free product list on it. Uh, I do want to say that I did contact the owner and they're going to put an update on uh, their website, which I'm very grateful to you and uh, many of you that are very sensitive to salicylates are, will also be grateful for. But I had found it and I had used it when I started my low salicylate diet. And so what I wanted to say is that there are two reasons why you should be on a low salicylate diet and that is you are sensitive or intolerant of salicylates. Then there is another group with fibromyalgia. There is a thing called the guafenicin protocol and they, part of that pro protocol is to have a low salicylate diet. And the reason why is so that when they take guafenicin, it can function properly because you don't have salicylates in your body reacting with it or kind of disabling it. And that is a much looser, um, program with salicylates. So when um, I've asked the owner to put up a little thing at the top of the website that says this is not for people with salicylate sensitivity. So she says that dyes, fragrances, preservatives, and coconut derived products are okay on the guafenicin protocol. And so when you look at uh, the list of shampoos, it includes a lot of products with coconut and fragrance products. And frankly, <laughs> they're too much for me. And I think that that's the case for a lot of people. So um, just because it says salicylate free doesn't mean that they really are truly salicylate free products. There's not really a way for us to ever tell or be able to test these products. And unfortunately, that is just the way it is. That's the reason why I want to make my directory for you guys to say and pipe up. I have it as a rating. You can go on there and say, yes, I react to this. No, I use this every single day. I have salicylate sensitivity and we can hash it out on there. Um, I, I would love to someday be able to do polls uh, and show those results online. But for now, um, I just want to say um, if you're on the fibromyalgia guafenicin protocol, that list is fine to use. If you're salicylate sensitive, salicylate intolerant, uh, don't use those. Don't use those. Uh, you're probably going to react to it. So with that, let's get started. The first one that I recommend is just a simple bar of soap. Now you can do this um, vegan or animal product. It doesn't matter. Uh, the one that I use, uh, I've rotated between tallow and lard. Tallow means that it's from cow fat, rendered cow fat. Uh, Lard is generally from rendered pork fat. And so I get mine from Etsy usually. Uh, there's a couple other um, vendors that I buy from. And they're hard to come by. Um, I've seen them on Amazon. Uh, this one here in particular is from Grazi Soaps. Nothing in my videos sponsored, just so you know. Um, this one here is grass-fed tallow and I just, um, if you buy off of Etsy, she has a program where if you buy $35, you get free shipping. So I think I got like 
probably 8 to 11 bars of this stuff. It's actually a really good price. And I use this uh, to wash my face, to wash my hair, to wash my body. I also uh, use it to sometimes wash some delicates like um, laundry or that kind of thing. I'll just get it kind of soapy uh, in my hand and then um, clean some of my garments. Um, I have this at the kitchen sink, at the bathroom sink, so I highly recommend tallow soap. But uh, the vendors on Etsy are amazing because you can contact them. These are professional soap makers and this, you know, you want to find somebody that's like got more than like three products and you want to find somebody that's not like commercial soaps. I did contact some that look like they're really big companies on Etsy selling. So um, what I recommend is if you don't want a tallow or a pork bar, um, you can contact them and say, hey, I'm sensitive to this. Can you make me a bar of soap with maybe canola oil or sunflower oil, which are low salicylate oils. Uh, so that's an option. The other thing about using just bar soap is uh, it's actually really easy to go travel. And yeah, this is my plant lab. I do a lot of botanical work that includes a lot of trips to very rural places. And it's really nice to just travel with a bar of soap and my toothbrush toothpaste. And that's really all I need when I go because I can just get away with this. Now I will say um, some of you guys might have different textured or you know different different style hair and I would imagine if I had shorter hair that it'd be a lot easier to use uh, tallow soap. Uh, my hair is I've got a lot of it. Um, it is straight. It's got a little tiny bit of a natural wave to it. You can see I've got some natural got some natural waves in there, but it, for the most part, it's pretty much straight. So I don't really have an issue too much with tangling. Um, some people say that, and I feel like, especially in like the, before the forties, people used to use soap all the time for the hair, but then we were told that soap's not good for our hair and will over dry our scalp and all this stuff. And frankly, I, I don't necessarily believe that. Um, I do like the soap because it's gentle. It doesn't over dry my hair. And that's one of the things about the no poo movement is that your, um, when you wash with shampoos that have detergents and surfactants, um, that you end up over drying your hair. So this, I can tell that it doesn't always, um, it doesn't over clean my hair. And as a result, some of the oils are still left in there and I don't need to condition. So I only use tallow soap. I don't ever condition it. If I feel like my hair is a little bit on the dry, and like I said, I style it quite a bit, um, especially on the ends, I might add a little tiny bit of emu oil or some lanolin toward the bottom, and that kind of gives it a little bit of a sleeker look. But uh, for the most part, I don't need conditioner, so I, I know that I'm very lucky, but I think that if you switch from shampoo to tallow soap, that you'll realize that your hair is not um, getting uh, as dried out as it would be with shampoo. Okay, the second thing that I use is very similar. So, um, and that is uh, liquid lard soap or liquid tallow soap. I actually don't remember which one this is. I'm thinking this is tallow. I'll put the links down below. These are also on my directory uh, at lowcelllife.com. There's a food and product directory list and uh, you can look up hair care and you'll find this, uh, all these different options. So, um, I contacted an Etsy seller uh, who had a lard mixed soap and asked if she could make a lard only or a tallow only uh, liquid soap and she did. And um, I'll explain why I asked for this specifically. Now this isn't as good as a tallow bar. First of all, tallow bars are cheaper. You can travel with them and you don't have to worry about them leaking in your bag. Uh, you can travel on an airplane with them if we ever get to do that again. And so I prefer the solid bars over this. However, it is nice to have a liquid lard soap. And there's plenty of reasons why I like to use these. Uh, sometimes I'll use them like, sometimes you just need liquid soap. And so um, that's the reason why I like these. Uh, you know, they're in plastic, so, you know, there's an environmental decision if you decide to go with that. Um, but I just like it. It's just pure lard soap. Sometimes it's easier to use. Uh, I just transfer it to a little uh, plastic bottle squeegee thing, and uh, you know, then I can just pour a couple drops in there and 
rub it around. Um, this works a little tiny bit better to remove oils from my hair. And I'm not talking natural oils like sebum. I'm talking about like if I had a massage and I had oil on my body and my hair sops all of that up, you know, I can, uh, this stuff works really well to get it out. And again, you can use a conditioner if you must. I think that over time you'll realize that you don't need as much conditioner, especially when you're using gentle cleansers. And again, I don't recommend washing the lower portion of your hair if you have long hair like me. Uh, you really just need to wash the scalp. That's where the oils and dirt build up. Okay, and this is one that you can buy. Uh, this is, um, again, not sponsored. I did use these, um, but they are not my preferred method. So, um, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. This is like the worst marketing campaign ever. It's clear, I'm guessing. Uh, it's got an emphasis on the year, so I'm thinking they're being cute and saying you're clear. I don't know. That's... <sighs> When your customer doesn't know how to pronounce your product, uh, it's not a good campaign. But anyway, um, they have a shampoo and a conditioner that you can use. Now, I, like I said, I've had issues with hair loss, and I'll talk about that in a future video. But the... <laughs> I had hair loss until October, so I went low sal like two and a half years ago, and I was using this product until October 2019. Um, I used it for a portion of last year and I was still having hair loss and then I decided to go uh, completely no shampoo and <laughs> switch to animal only products and then my hair stopped falling out. So I'm pretty sure that it was still a salicylate reaction um, or, or something. There might have been something else I was allergic to in this. So the reason I don't love the clear shampoo, first of all it cleans pretty well. Um, I feel like it does overdry my hair, so I do like the conditioner. And I haven't had an issue with the conditioner because I still use that. So this here has uh, cocoa glucose glucoside and then olefin sulfonate and another cocoa amphodiacetate, diacetate, and disodium EDTA. So I thought I read EDTA has salicylates in it, if not a benzene ring. Um, benzene type compound. It's usually used as a preservative, I believe. And I'll I'll write, I always include like a blog with every video that I write that includes like more detailed information and resources. So I'll put any information I find on that. But what I don't get is why coconut products are still being used in <laughs> salicylate free shampoo. I do believe like xylitol is usually a birch or corn product, but it's supposed to be salicylate free. Uh, I do believe that products can be refined enough that they're not, um, that they no longer have the compounds that we're sensitive to. I know the Celiac Foundation, you know, says that Kettle One Vodka is okay even though it's a wheat product. They say that it's so distilled that you no longer have gliadin or gluten products uh, in it. People that are really sensitive to gluten, gliadin, and wheat products just stay away from it, right? And it, that's a good way to go. So I kind of am a purist and because of the coconut products in here and I still continue to lose my hair uh, when I use this product, uh, I'm gonna say I don't prefer it, but it does clean. I, I do use it maybe like every two, three weeks as like um, just a simple cleaner, uh, kind of like if I get really grimy. Uh, or it's been like several days since I've washed my hair, I might need a little extra clean. So I might use that. Um, again, it's not my favorite. I don't see anything in the uh, in the conditioner that looks scary, and I haven't had any issues using the conditioner. So, um, so I'd recommend that. Okay, and my hair journey has been challenging, and so uh, this year, this is one reason I wanted to do this. Um, do this video today it was because I am almost out of this. So this here, I, I've i had a dry and itchy scalp for a long time. My dermatologist thinks that it's um, just good old fashioned, I think it's cyberic dermatitis, which is basically caused by a yeast, which causes dandruff. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that that's the case, um, but 
uh, as a solution, my naturopath and I worked on this. So this is another liquid Etsy lard or tallow soap just like this one here that I ordered. I actually ordered these at the same time. This one came in a little bit thicker, so I decided to, and sooner, and so I decided to use this one. Um, this one is, I think it's Whippersnappers um, soap, and what I did was I worked with my naturopath uh, to try and use um, a dandruff shampoo active ingredient. So. Um, I took this down to the compounding pharmacy and they, with my dermatologist's um, recommendation, uh, put in zinc pyrithione in here uh, as the active ingredient to combat dandruff and I got it mixed up. I, I delivered this to the pharmacy and then they added the active ingredient and then that way I knew that I was only using an animal product on my hair plus the zinc uh, pyrithione. So if I had a reaction, I would know it was to the zinc. Uh, and not to a soap. That worked out pretty well. Um, it didn't really solve my dry itchy scalp issue, which the more that I look into it, it's probably something that I'm consuming that's causing it because it does fluctuate. Anyway, I just wanted to say that if you have more of a eminent need for treating a dry itchy scalp and you've been told you have dermatitis, that maybe uh, this is something that you can try. Uh, and then the last thing, I don't have a prop with me, but the last thing that I do occasionally wash my hair with is just a um, baking soda. Um, sometimes I find that if I use the lard soap or the, um, yeah, basically if I use the lard soap, sometimes I feel like a little bit grimy or heavy like right in the back here. Sometimes because I have so much hair, it gets... Uh, really hard to get in there and get a good scrub. I've also, uh, I moved in March, in about six, five months ago, and I ended up with hard water. So I'm, I'm switching over from a soft water to a hard water system, and sometimes it's just not enough. So what I'll do is um, I'll just take a little bit of baking soda, maybe like uh, one or two teaspoons. I'll mix it around with like a quarter cup of uh, water, throw it in one of these things and just scrub uh, my scalp and the, you know, top two, three inches of my hair. And that will get rid of any, um, it's a really good cleaner. I don't recommend it all the time. It can't over clean. It's very uh, alkaline and your skin should stay acidic. And so I don't recommend it for daily use, but uh, it does work as a great cleaner. And like I said, I put a lot of junk in my hair. Um, there's pomades and beeswax and lanolin and a whole bunch of stuff I add to my hair uh, to style it. And so the baking soda just kind of gives it a really good like start over uh, clean. So uh, I recommend that. What I don't recommend that my dermatologist didn't recommend is uh, this here for free and clear uh, shampoo and it says for sensitive skin and unfortunately it's in the same boat as the clear shampoo. Um, it has cocoa, glucoside, uh, it's got a bunch of coconut products in it and then it also has that disodium EDTA and this one here also um, like I would use it, well I use it pretty consistently because I was told to, um, but I was still having hair loss and then I will use it occasionally, uh, but I'm just, I'm gonna not use this any longer. So if you have allergies, if you're sensitive um, to shampoos and you try this and it's still not working, it, it really might not be um, a thyroid issue or you know, uh, all the other reasons why, you know, hormone issue, uh, it might just really be your shampoo and this is just not mild enough for you. So uh, if that's the case, I recommend a um, bar of soap uh, to get started. Uh, I have tried, oh, so I have tried the hair conditioner. Uh, it is good. It's similar to the clear and it doesn't cause any reactions for me. So that's an option for conditioner. Uh, this, uh, I, it's really frustrating, especially when you have allergies or sensitivities. You buy these things and then you try it and then you realize you can't use them. And one thing that um, I do keep these and I do wash like my lingerie or 
uh, delicate with these sometimes. Uh, sometimes, you know, I use like a menstrual cup, so I might use this here because it actually does have a detergent as opposed to my lard or tallow soaps are just soaps. So um, they are chemically different. So um, I do use these for them. It doesn't bother my hand. It doesn't like over dry my hands out or anything like that. So don't necessarily throw this stuff out because you can't use it. You know, you might be able to use it on something else um, that is less sensitive than your scalp and your hair. If there is a shampoo or conditioner or other product that you use on your hair on a regular basis, please let us know um, in the comments. Even more so, it'll get my attention if you leave some information on my website at lowstylelife.com. There's contact forms all over the place, I think under About Us, and you can let me know what product it is that you want to add to it. We really need to stick together and help everybody worldwide. I. I want to see Australia, I want to see the US, UK, all the other countries in between. Uh, I want to see all your products in there. And you know, the, the rating and reviews allows you to say, hey, I'm in South Africa and I can get this product too. You know, uh, so let's, let's make this a really great resource, especially for new people coming. Uh, if you've had low, uh, if you've been salicylate sensitive for many, many years, we need you to pipe up and let us know how you survive and live. So. Um, with all that said, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at lowstylelife.com. Uh, if you like this video and you're new here, uh, please subscribe, like this video, comment. Um, this, this is more about building a community, so please be a part of it. I think that's all. Bye!